try to to post it not try we will post it on social media and share it uh, with uh, like uh, with our hub members again to show um, the, this uh, this event uh, so without further ado let me give the floor to Hashem so Hashem is uh, our global shaper he uh, is a strategy consultant and he actually he has his own startups not even one but three um so currently his his full-time job is a, a senior specialist at, at man social incubator in abu dhabi uh, uae working uh, again on on startups and at man he's working on 10 startups so previously he he worked for sandok al watan a ue based organization then consulting uh, firms such as boston and consulting group and, uh, and Deloitte. Uh, Hashem studied economics at American University of Sharjah and uh, past uh, few weeks he has been working remotely and managing a remote team so let's uh, hear from him how he was doing that um, and uh, and then please again feel free to uh, put uh, more questions in the chat. Hashem I'm making you a host and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Adrian. I appreciate it. It's happy to be here, guys. I hope uh, you're all doing well in this current kind of situation we're in and what we're facing. Um, uh, so today our workshop will be about uh, remote working. Uh, let me just put the chat section on. So just in case somebody asks any questions, I'm able to see it. Okay, perfect. Uh, sometimes you might see my face here and there because I have multiple screens on, so uh, don't worry about that. Um, so quick agenda, I'll just go briefly, maybe I'll skip the first point because Ajan introduced me very well, and then we'll jump into what the challenges we face in remote working, and then what's the best practice in overcoming these, um, and uh, efficient collaborations, using the right tools, and then fostering social interactions. Um, uh, just as a uh, as a recap of what uh, Arijan mentioned, uh, my three startups are at the top: strategy consulting, a creative studio, and a deep tech company. Uh, you can Google it and then find out about it more. I'll try and keep the session about you guys, not about me, and my past experience across uh, different entities. Um, so we face different challenges when it comes to uh, remote working, not just. Um, when, when the COVID came in, but also some industries work remotely all year round, even before COVID. Um, BCG and consulting is a, is a good example. We always work with the clients uh, across different countries. Sometimes we are in a certain country and the client is another, in another one. And how can we manage uh, the relationship and the work, et cetera, uh, to make it as effective as it, uh, it would be in a physical world? Um, so some of these challenges that we actually face could be limited face-to-face -face, uh, social interaction and uh, some could be also constrained on group uh, collaboration on, in the sense of teamwork, brainstorming and so on. It, it is different to do it uh, physically because you can always draw on a board, you can always have that, uh, let's say, physical um, uh, contribution to, uh, to an argument or a challenge between each other. Uh, telecom ex exhaustion in the sense uh, maybe some people are not very tech savvy, so it becomes really hard for them to manage um, tech devices, tools, apps. You know, some people are, are not old fashioned, but they feel more comfortable uh, using, let's say, a physical notebook or, you know, writing on the board. Um, but uh, with our current situation, a lot of people are forced to, to use the tech. And you, you might have noticed if you, if you work or you're dealing with some professors, Maybe they're not very used to that. Uh, and you'll see that they're facing these challenges and trying their best to overcome these. Uh, implication assumptions in the sense that you might be as, assuming certain things about your colleagues, about your boss, and it's not really true, but because you don't have that facial uh, impression or that uh, interaction uh, that you typically face in a phys physical world, so you start creating some assumptions. And also an unfamiliar work environment. This all comes in together as an environment. Um, so best practices, I mean, this is followed by uh, the best people across uh, across industries. Um, it's it's not comprehensive, but this is in a nutshell how it, how it is. Um, we've got a few points, uh, three buckets. Uh, first of all, to ensure efficient collaboration so that uh, you can overcome some of the challenges mentioned above. 
which means, for example, setting up a formal or a more frequent meeting, and we'll deep dive a bit uh, down the line. Uh, secondly, conducting more uh, checkups, uh, either morning, afternoon, having some uh, uh, breakouts, uh, and so on. Um, second category is using the right digital tools, uh, so using uh, virtual collaboration tools to simplify your team working, either it being Zoom, like what we're using right now, or some of the other collaboration tools to make your work more effectively and efficiently, and we'll deep dive into that. Um, obviously, the fourth uh, option, uh, fourth point is using conference calls. Um, there, uh, some people use uh, regular, let's say, WhatsApp calls or FaceTime, but depending on your country, your situation, you need to use uh, different ones. Um, uh, also, leveraging tools that are uh, effective in instant communication, sometimes uh, depending on the situation you're in. For example, WhatsApp is it's good for quick chats, but there's there are other communication tools that are more effective, um, uh, and we'll deep dive. Later, uh, fostering social team interaction, which is very important. You see, uh, they had um, so uh, creating a new routine, providing frequent updates, encouraging social interaction. You know, uh, promoting uh, spontaneous and positive interactions across teams, and we'll give some examples of these things. Uh, that became uh, innovative in, the, in, in our current situation to ensure that every team member has the same, let's say, feel and interaction as they would in the physical world. Uh, at the same time, don't do too much for the team and it becomes uh, too much for them to also balance and keep up, keep up with. Uh, as well as, um, uh, this is uh, some of the ideas that I will uh, show uh, in the next slides, uh, could apply to you, maybe it, it, it doesn't, depends on different factors, the seniority of the team, the team dynamics, um, maybe even the, the way that the team works, you know, uh, but these are some of the best practices. The, the nice thing is that you can always change, uh, change them. Uh, the first point that we mentioned, um, which is setting up a formal or a more frequent uh, meetings with the team, um, and this is just a sample. It doesn't need to be concrete uh, and set stone. You can obviously change a lot of these things. Um, but a typical, let's say, uh, schedule that we, we, we follow in our workplace, and I, I'm sure a lot of people follow in, uh, in, uh, in similar workplaces, uh, is that we typically have a morning check-in, which is basically we discuss the objectives, what, what we have to do, and... Um, uh, what things we need to accomplish within the day or within the week. Uh, again, depends on how your team feel comfortable with. Uh, and that should be a very short 15 minute, very precise, very to, to the point itself to make sure that you don't waste time. Uh, and you can always leverage tools to facilitate the conversation, for example, through the chat, etc. cetera. Um, and then you can have different uh, various meetings across the day. So for example, uh, maybe you have, um, uh, you know, a work stream where it collaborates with your colleague and you need to make sure that you're aligned in certain things. And this is the various meetings that, that you can uh, conduct either uh, before or after your morning check -in. depends on your team. Um, so you can see there's a morning check-in and then the various check-ins and then there's an afternoon check-in. So you can see at the two sides, they're the same. And then you also have a focus blocker. This focus blocker is very important. You can have one big one, you can have multiple small ones. Depends on what you feel comfortable, as well as what what your team, um, uh, what your team dynamics are. And the the focus blockers are very important in the sense where you block your time um, and you set it as a self meeting where you need to focus on developing your own content or doing the actual work that you need to do. Because you feel a tendency that there will be a lot of meetings coming in. Uh, some are related to you, some are not, uh, and that could be wasting your time and effort, and and uh, and can drag in, uh, drag uh, along too much into your into your time. And because it's remote work, sometimes you it will take most of your ta work time, and then you won't have any lifetime. So then your actual work will be pushed to the to to late nights and and doing overnights. So you need to balance a bit between the two and try and uh, block the time where you need to develop your content, and then. And push back when you need to push back on either your manager or other colleagues. 
Also, uh, make sure you have a lunch break and a team uplift. So some things that we've done is, uh, let's say, virtual lunch breaks with the team. So we just basically launch a, a meeting. Everybody's eating at, uh, at his own place and, um, you know, having that casual social discussion. And that contributes to the factor that we mentioned, which is building the team, uh, the team spirit and uh, uplifting them as well. Um, also, maybe you can block, um, this is optional, but a team content discussion. Uh, which means, for example, you're owning a module and you want to uh, have different perspectives um, uh, or you want to kind of uh, um, get a challenge or review some of the content together. So this is where you block a team. Again, as I mentioned, this is just a sample schedule. It could be more rigorous, it could be shorter, depends on your team. Maybe even one week you have something similar to this and then the other week you have something completely, let's say, focused blocker. The full week is just for you to develop content. Uh, but it's always important to have a morning check-in as well as an afternoon check-in, especially if you're a junior person, not a senior, uh, just to make sure that the objectives you set in the morning, you have achieved them in the afternoon, which means that your boss can see or your manager can see that you have actually accomplished uh, what you aim to accomplish in that day. And that plays a big role into your uh, evaluation and your, uh, let's say, your uh, uh, your progress uh, down the line because there is a tendency that the managers remotely will start seeing maybe you're taking too long to accomplish a certain task that you, you that you should have. Um, yeah, <clears throat> sorry. Um, secondly, conduct um, the conducting of the morning and check-in and afternoon and check-out daily meetings. Um, just a few tips here uh, to make it more effective and uh, and efficient. Uh, start and end on the same time. For example, if the time is set, let's say today we had our conference call, it's at six. Try and make five minutes uh, before the call you're on there, just in case you had any tech issues, just in case uh, you know you need to prepare, etc. Always trying to be five minutes ahead uh, and, and make that kind of the check in, check out, very precise, 15 minutes. Try not to go beyond. Uh, if everybody's on on time and everybody finishes his points on time, that 15 minutes should be enough, which leads us to the next uh, point, which is share your objectives and actions pre-hand. So uh, if, if you're the guy or the person who's uh, arranging that call, make sure that all the objectives that need to be discussed in that meeting are shared, are shared in the invite that is sent. And there's an option to add it in the Zoom or WebEx or whatever tool you're using. And the action items that need to be taken by the various employees or colleagues uh, for that meeting, uh, which makes it very easy for them to see that you're following an agenda and it's precise and you keep it short and, and, and tight. Um, uh, also, it's a good opportunity for those meetings. Um, sorry. It's a good opportunity for those meetings to highlight any, any problems that you are facing and any that are causing you to, uh, that are causing your progress to become slower. It could be very, it could be a wide range of uh, problems. Could be, for example, a client is not providing you the right data, and um, a colleague is not delivering on time. Uh, maybe the IT, whatever it is, it's that morning check-in and afternoon or a daily checkout. It's a good opportunity to raise these issues for your superiors or your managers, so that they can take action on immediately instead of you keeping it down the line and then. And then it becomes a really uh, bottleneck and a negative impact on the progress as well as your your uh, your evaluation. Uh, on on top of that, it's also a good opportunity to share any uh, good news, you know, wins. Maybe you completed a module. Maybe you let's say you're, you're a sales guy and you sold uh, a new project. So you, you share it with your team. It's a good opportunity to do so. Maybe somebody got married. You know, <laughs> whatever it is. Sharing these uh, either professional or social ones are really good because it uh, kind of uplifts the team, you know. It's not only objectives, actions, these are their problems, you know. It's a good balance to kind of share the good things as well as the bad things, you know. Um, number three is using virtual collaboration tools to simplify your team work. This is super important. I think the young generations like yourselves are very uh, good with the tech tools. They got used to it because you know, we're a tech generation. Uh, I'm not too old, by the way. I'm still young. So uh, it, it, these could be a challenge for your for your uh, managers or your colleagues um, that are a bit more senior in age. 
Um, so the more you're used to these tools, the, the better or the easier that you can help them in. So then you can check that, you know, team collaboration and team spirit. Uh, some of these just high level categories of the best tools that we use in the market. Um, and there could be more, there could be less depending on your entity, et cetera. But for example, file sharing, some entities have their own uh, servers and files, but a lot of them uh, sign up with these uh, service providers like uh, OneDrive, Google Drive, Ignite, for example. Uh, there's a lot of them. These are just some examples, but these are very good to share uh, files real time. They're up there. So people don't have the excuse of saying, oh, you did not share this file with me or uh, this file's too big. I can't share it by email. Fine. The OneDrive solves, that, solves those problems. Uh, secondly, video conferencing, I think you guys are very used to it, but just to highlight, there's a lot out there. We've got Zoom, the one that we're using. WebEx is good as well. Uh, Google Meets is, a, is another good one people are using right now. Uh, whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever the entity goes with, if you're using it personal as well, um, uh, there's Microsoft team, Teams as well. Uh, they're all good. I'm not going to be biased. Um, instant messaging, um, also there's a lot of them. Uh, the one I like most uh, is Slack. And the reason behind that is uh, Slack is structured in a way that you can have multiple channels of conversations depending on the topic. So you can have a generic one for all the employees or all the team members. Uh, but let's say you have different projects uh, and different clients, et cetera. And uh, it's not like the WhatsApp where you, you need to create different groups and it becomes really challenging. So in Slack, you can actually create different channels um, Actually, let me uh, maybe I think it will be a good idea to share it and see and show them how, how effective it is. Um, let me share my Slack screen. So, uh, for example, this is the one that I'm running with um, uh, at work with the incubators. So, it's nine MSI. We only got uh, I'm managing the cohort. So you can see I have one for general, I have one related just to incubators, so anything related to the program itself. I have one for random, random is like good content, good material I share with them. So you can see that the conversations between the different channels are, um, are, uh, are, are, uh, are different. So whenever someone's in a specific channel, he knows that that channel is for that topic, which means that you're making sure that all of the kind of content is filtered before you, um, before you populate it in that channel, which means it's easier for the person to understand what, what discussions you're, you're going in because sometimes it does become confusing when different topics are different and people are not very used to that. Um, the nice thing about um, Slack as well, uh, which I really like, is you can add a lot of uh, plugins to it, um, even the free version. Uh, See, so you can add your Zoom, your calendar, your Trello, which I'll, which I'll highlight uh, in a second, OneDrive. So what does that mean? That means that your efficiency in work will skyrocket. In the sense, if you have uh, a task in Trello or you shared a new file on OneDrive, it's going to populate in the channel that you decided that where it should populate in, which means it sends a reminder to each person or you're discussing something in the channel, for example, and then you kind of link the file here that is linked in the OneDrive or, or the Google Drive or whatever, uh, which, which makes it easier for people to track, to make sure that you're doing your work, um, easy access, and so on. So Trello is really amazing. And you can see I have multiple Trello accounts. This one's, for example, for my company, Abis. Um, this one's small businesses in, in UAE. So I get a lot of good content and so on. You can go forever in here. Uh, it's infinite, so which, mean, which gives it a lot of... Uh, uh, power. Uh, one second. I don't know where the chat went. Uh, yeah. So let me stop sharing this one. Go back to the slides. And let me open the chat just in case somebody opens. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's for instant chatting. There's also something called Bitrix24. It's a very, very, very powerful software. Uh, sometimes it's a bit confusing as well because of so many things they've inter uh, interconnected together. Um, some things that you might not need, some things you might need. So uh, Bitrix is good when you have a 
you know, like an enterprise wide kind of um, uh, solution and, uh, you know, hundreds of employees and a lot of data and a lot of kind of tools you need. So it's a bit more expensive, but there is a free version. Um, it's, it's whatever you feel comfortable. Uh, now, in terms of activity and task uh, tracking, um, so uh, there's multiple, again, in the market. Uh, Trello, in my opinion, is really good. Very simple, very straightforward. You can, track, you can link it to Slack. You can link it to your OneDrive. So it's very powerful, and it's free uh, to a certain extent. Uh, but the free version is more than enough. Uh, Monday.com is also good. I haven't used it personally, but I've seen the UX UI interface. It's really powerful. And again, Bitrix also offers the same. So Bitrix actually offers um, the file sharing, the instant messaging, the activity all in one, um, in addition to other, other kind of CRM systems, accounting systems. So it's like a, it's a full on um, solution. But for me or for you guys also as students and individuals, it could be too much. And uh, you might not be able to utilize all the solutions, uh, the free ones. Um, so a few tips on when using a video conference call to simplify communication. Uh, some of the best practices, and, and, and this I think applies also here, Ajahn, on <laughs> some people are, might be a bit shy in sharing their videos, but uh, it's a good opportunity for us to, to kind of highlight this. It's, uh, first of all, it's really important when you're having a meeting to switch on your video. Um, it just uh, makes it easier for that other person to actually see your facial expressions um, and actually make the communication much, much easier. Um, uh, so the first point is looking into the camera. Um, and the reason why is that it shows that you're paying attention. So the other person uh, does not create that assumptions. Remember that we mentioned in the first slide, some of the challenges that people create assumptions in their mind. So if they can't see you, those assumptions will start increasing. And I've seen this so many times at work that I'm in right now, and it does cause problems down the line. Um, even personally, if you think about it, if you're married or something and your wife is somewhere and your husband's somewhere else, and you're, you know, you're talking and then you don't see their facial expressions, you start you know, making some assumptions because maybe their voice is not um, giving you the right message. So video is always, is always good in the workforce. Um, uh, so uh, the next uh, the next top uh, the next point is pass the mic often. Um, so this this comes into play whenever it, there's a team collaboration on a specific topic, or even when you're doing a social video conferencing. You know, uh, your friends are all over, and you want to make sure that everybody talks in the presentation or in the meeting. Uh, and that's important because you don't want one person to have you know the the mic by himself unless he's presenting something and even when he's presenting something he should pause between time and time uh, just to make sure that people are jumping in unless his aim of the presentation is let me present everything and then you can jump in towards the end which is what we're doing right now right so pass on the mic often and that creates a good vibe in the team um spice it up a bit keep your audience engaged could be different ways if it's a professional meeting try and make it professional as possible but um, not too awkward as well um, so maybe you know a quick joke in the beginning before everybody joins in like what Aijan did as well you know uh, tell us who you are where you're from etc um, if it's a friendly thing you know a few jokes here and there doesn't hurt uh, keeps it, it keeps the momentum going um, the third point the fourth point is deliver a clear message so it's really important to stay focused on what you're trying to say in the presentation. If you remember just a few slides ago, we mentioned, make sure you have your objectives, your things you want to discuss. Uh, so if you have that, try to stick to it in your, uh, when you're delivering the, the message or the, the meeting or whatever it is. And make sure that uh, you don't you know, try and you know, drag along a topic into subtopics, et cetera. A tendency happens, uh, but try always to focus on what you're trying to say and make it crisp and clear so that people don't make assumptions and, and take actions on, on their assumptions. Um, wear neutral clothes, i.e. You know, a blank one, blank colored one, to avoid any distractions. You know, um, People sometimes wear you know, two colorful clothes. I see you guys wearing very clear cut clothes, something if it's, a, obviously if it's a meeting, very formal. If it's a friendly thing, it's fine, but depends on the occasion. Um, oh, and the last point is ask pointed questions. Don't ask open-ended questions where 
conversations are going for you know 30 and 30 minutes an hour two hours as make sure your questions are very precise and answered really quickly by the presenter or whoever is on the meeting and that if you can see it plays a big role on you know for the person who's delivering the message can really become precise as well as keeping that time frame and uh, to the objectives that you want to discuss uh, last point which is building a strong team spirit uh, and pleasant work environment and, and that uh, creates kind of a, and a split into three it could be more this is what i see fit as best practice is creating a routine and providing frequent frequent updates um so uh, you know make sure there's boundaries between your work and life um, so that it doesn't become blurry because you know you're working remotely there's a tendency that you know you work you work you work you love your work you, and then you work till like eight nine and then you can't you don't have a a, a life you know so um make sure there's there's boundaries um uh, get up and prepare uh, you know if you're working remote or you're doing things remote as students etc make sure you follow the same routine that you're following if it's a physical regular life you know you get up in the same time take a shower etc make your coffee take a breakfast you know suit up uh, make that appearance well and and, and stay on uh, as if you're at work um Make sure to uh, push informal conversations into instant chats uh, to increase visibility. Um, uh, in the sense, it's one, it's engaging. Secondly, you don't want to, uh, you know, talk about things informally in official meetings. You want to try and avoid that. Again, it depends on the kind of meeting you're setting. If it's between colleagues, one or two, it's fine. If it's between a manager or a director or so on, you want to try and make it as professional as possible. Um, uh, protect uh, yeah uh, these some of the mentions some of the sub points we've mentioned before encourage uh, non-work related social interactions so this applies for more on the manager managerial level that uh, you encourage or if you're a senior person you know like a consultant you're not a manager but you're kind of senior um, whenever you're having those lunch breaks or those two three minutes before the meeting or two three minutes after the meeting you know, uh, encourage non-work related, as I mentioned, you know, those quick wins, oh, you know, like uh, I just got engaged yesterday or something like that. I mean, I didn't, but you get the point, right? Uh, uh, add a buffer, a buffer between uh, before and after the meetings for those informal relationship buildings and uh, sharing opportunities. So whoever is managing the, the meeting invites, make sure, you know, you're since you're the one who's launching the meeting, you're there five, ten minutes before and you keep another five minutes after, you know? Um, it's really important for some people. Um, uh, promote spontaneous and positive interaction. So again, as I mentioned, if there's a win uh, and it's not related to your team and you're the manager, do actually bring it up. Uh, it helps, um, you know, uh, the team celebrate something new. Accomplishments, even if it's personal, let's say somebody gets a driving license. You know, celebrate that that person did get us a driving license. He's part of the team. Uh, utilize best cultural barriers to drive team motivation and share best practices. And, you know, uh, uh, eating with each other is one of these uh, things, you know, um, having lunch breaks. Maybe some people find it uh, uncomfortable. I heard one of our teams in our, in our entity tried this and uh, they faced uh, uh, some uncomfortable situations, you know. It happens, but um, you can try, for example, coffee breaks, you know, five minute coffee breaks. It could be a bit stressful. Don't over engineer it, but it's, it really helps in building that team spirit. Uh, and that's it. Uh, thank you, guys. I'll keep um, uh, so we have enough time around 40 minutes to answer any Q&A. You can either write it on the chat. I'm happy to answer it or you know, open the mic and, and, and talk. Uh, it's a good opportunity to kind of apply the things that we just mentioned. And if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer through email or through Ajan, um, our curator. You know? Great. Thanks so much, Hashim. This has been um, extremely helpful. Um, I also learned some tips, so uh, we'll, we'll uh, use them in our Dubai Hub Shapers meeting. Um, so I think we, uh, I think you meant we have 20 minutes, not 40 minutes, unless uh, uh, pe pe people want to stay further, we, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, I think one of the questions in the chat 
was about um, Sarah was asking that Zoom is banned in Syria and some other locations. Are there any other um, uh, apps that may work? So there is a Slack actually has the calling mechanism, uh, but without a video, it's an audio and it works pretty good. So some, some of these apps were actually blocked in the UAE before the pandemic. And then our tele regulation authority opened it up. Uh, but I used to use Slack uh, before, as long as I have an audio, uh, a Wi-Fi signal, uh, Slack audio works pretty good. Okay, great. Uh, I see another is it a question from Jibril. I think now he's commenting. The Blue Jeans is good as well. Blue Jeans app is, uh, I heard, is good. I haven't, I've never tried it, but some ministries here use it, and it's actually pretty good, yeah. Great. Okay, Jibril uh, seems like has a lot of experience with all the apps, yeah. Discord, and Gitter. I haven't heard of Gitter. I've heard about Discord, which is like Slack. Great. Discord is nice. more popular. Yeah, lots of resources that you have in the group. Feel free to keep sharing and feel free to ask um, Hashem questions in a chat or um, just unmute yourself. Yeah. I think we have a question from Alexandra. What would you recommend to a new employee who wants to implement some of the recommendations in their new company? So I guess the question is, if you're new and you have this idea, how do you <laughs> encourage others to use Slack or Zoom or any of these uh, yeah. tools? I mean, um, I face this difficulty, um, and I, actually, I still face it at work. You know, so not a lot of people are comfortable using new tools, even if they're young. You know, they feel it's a new burden. Um, I think the easiest way is trying to, you know, test it out, uh, the simple steps a bit, uh, maybe get them in a room, show them what issues you're facing when you're not using this tool and how this tool can actually solve those issues. Um, the Slack example of the different channels can actually come, come in really helpful. Last year, the cohort um, were using WhatsApp and it became very confusing. So once I introduced uh, Slack, it, become, it became easier. The, the, the challenge that you might face on after introducing it is making people actively using it, you know? Um, the more you use it, the more benefit you, you'll gain from it. Um, for example, Trello in our startups, we used to, we, we, launched, we started using it as soon as we launched, but not too actively. We were still on, you know, the manual to-do tasks on notebooks, et cetera, and then it became confusing. And then uh, we decided, okay, everybody pushes everyone else to use Slack and use Trello. You know, if anybody, you know, posts something on WhatsApp, we ignore it. We, we go back to, uh, you know, Trello or Slack. And this way, when everybody's pushing each other, then it's just a matter of time until you start getting used to it. So it, it is challenging, but it's, um, you got to find uh, the balance between pushing, but not too much. And try and use the manager as a senior person to push on your behalf as well. Uh, if you get a senior person to use it, then uh, the others will start following, you know. Um, for example, at work, we, we launched the Bitfix uh, to monitor who checks in and out. Everybody started using it for the first month. And then, and then once we saw nobody's tracking and nobody's doing it, uh, people started to slack off. And now nobody's using it and there was a big, inve a big investment towards it. So it's, it's more about introduce and then actively use and push other people to use it as well. Yeah. Right, thank you, Hashem. Do you have other questions? Feel free to raise your hand or unmute yourself or write in the chat. Oh, if you want to share your experience, what worked great to your class or your team or work, feel free to do so.
Yeah, I think there was a comment from Muhammad. Difficult to interact in front of camera, more comfortable in real interviews. Yes, I, I guess that's true in nowadays that we are pushed to, um, to now interact in front of basically a laptop and a camera. <laughs> but uh, definitely it's different from in-person um, setting. So Hashem, question for you. How to make yourself to feel more comfortable in a virtual interview uh in front of cameras what tips can you give so uh, so if you if you think about it just logically if you have an interview you go prepare with a friend or somebody you know a big brother or a senior friend um, physically right just do the same with the live camera you know set up uh, even if you're in the same house or the same building uh, let them be in a different room and you're in a different room and just practice online you know um, for me, I uh, honestly, I hate um, doing video conferencing when it started at home uh, because I live with my father and my mother, they're a bit old, so they, they have the tendency just to walk into my room and uh, you know, give, me, give me a tea, give me that. So I, I, I was always worrying about that. And then also I'm not comfortable uh, on, on, on camera. Um, but then I had to, you know, you're forced to do it. So you just need to figure out the different ways. So if you're Let's say you're uncomfortable because you're too close to the camera. So then, you know, just work it out. Uh, if you're uncomfortable because uh, you're sitting posture, you know, you can always practice it. Also record yourself, um, you know, normal video recording and then look back and then see what kind of things you did weird and then try and fix it up. Uh, so try and take the technology into your advantage and do different video conferences with different friends if you're preparing for an interview. Um, and try and see that. Uh, what I can say is that it, it is, um, th there are some, you know, uh, negative things of, on doing interviews on video, especially if the counterpart is not switching on their camera, you know, they're not following the best practices that I mentioned. Uh, one, you, you won't be able to see the interviewer's uh, 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 reactions. So you, you, you won't be able to react to what his face or his impressions are, which means that it could negatively impact your interview uh, success, um, which means that you need to play around more on your audio, you know? And if your video is not working because of internet and bandwidth, obviously try and figure that out before. Make sure that you have good, strong internet. If you don't have it at home, go to a cafe or something that does. Uh, and make sure that your face is always showing because your impressions play a big role in the interview. Um, but let's assume, you know, things go really bad when it comes to the time. Uh, so uh, practice when internet's good, you have video and the other person does, and when you have and he doesn't, and when he has and you don't, and when you both don't. And then try and figure out. And you have facial uh, impressions as well as uh, uh, vocal impressions. So your vocal also plays a role on, you know, highlighting the important topics or important points. Um, um, uh, maybe use uh, specific words that uh, your facial impressions would reflect, but because that lags, so the words will reflect that impression. You know, you got to balance a bit between the, the different things. Thank you, Hashem, for the response. Uh, Sarah and Walla and uh, Thank you, Hashem, for this. Yeah, Mohammed, do you have a question? Or you? <laughs> I was just thanking Hashem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so we've been discussing in the chat of, um, about online hackathons. Oh, Hashem is, uh, has, been, uh, has done uh, hackathons <laughs> for sure. So Sarah's question is, any tips for online hackathons? Because Sarah and Walla um, participated in three-day, I guess, hackathon, and it was tough. Um, yeah. They used Zoom and Slack, and they helped, but not as much. So yeah. uh, opinion is that, that they're very difficult to, to do online. So what would you advise for people participating in online hackathons and maybe for those who organize them? So I, uh, I have uh, participated in physical ones, but not online ones. So I'm not sure of the experience, how it is. But 
let's assume that the hackathon is as if it's physical, but you're physically not there. So I'm assuming that the camera is always on, there's somebody who's managing the different breakout rooms, etc. cetera. Um, I think applying everything we mentioned in the presentation, and ad one addition to that, if you have the means to do that, is uh, either buy uh, an, uh, another screen or uh, use um, uh, an extra TV screen at home. Um, having multiple screens and in meetings and uh, hackathons will play a big role. Why? Because you'll have a screen um, that has, let's say, the active uh, screen, which has the, the breakout rooms, the chats, etc. So you can always see that and you're always monitoring it. And then you have your workstation, which is your main screen where you do most of your work. Um, so if I showed you my workstation, it's crazy a bit. It's a 49 inch screen. <laughs> Uh, wide screen and then I have an extra one uh, on the side just for my to-do tasks and chats and etc and then I have my middle one for my actual work so then I have multiple things um, running at the same time so anything that comes in I, I never miss it it's always there and whenever you know like just what we did the conference call I have my main screen sharing which has the presentation etc I have my chat and the participants on the left, on my right, so you can always see the chat. That's why I'm always looking on the side, uh, so I don't miss anything. Uh, and then I have my emails, my you know my other screens that I'm working on for content, extra content, extra notes. So that might kind of help and make it easier. But I, I would say that's from a participant's perspective. But from a, a manager, um, a person who's managing the event. The same thing applies, you know, having multiple screens enables you to have more power. Uh, but I think what will play a bigger role is uh, organizing the event virtually. In the sense, uh, using, again, multiple chat, uh, multiple tools. So having a Slack chat for the hackathon for communication, you know, Q&As, et cetera, and having more people come in and support uh, as the team. And then having uh, the, the Zoom always on, recorded with multiple breakout sessions that are linked to the agenda that you have in mind. So that everybody has visibility. This time uh, there will be 10 breakout sessions. These are the topics. Uh, if you want to, you have to pre, let's say, pre uh, contribute by putting your name in the Slack or having a voting thing, you know? So that's from a participant, uh, the, um, the manager or the person who's managing the event. Uh, but these are my initial, that's how I would approach it, but I've never done a virtual hackathon yet. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope my tips helped. Thank you so much, Mr. Hisham. Anytime. What? Great, yes, yeah, Sarah mentioned that um, it's, a, it's a good idea. And that's a good consideration for next time when uh, she participates. Yeah. yeah. So I would add just uh, uh, five cents to Hashim's answer. And uh, from participants' perspective, um, last time when I participated in four day, it wasn't a hackathon, but it was a few hours event with with more than two hundred people participating and it was a, 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 a online conference. Uh, I think the key for engagement was these breakout rooms and very effective facilitation. So what you want a person in a room, in a breakout room, who will encourage participation and who will ask inputs from, from people. Um, and Because no one wants to listen to a panel when there's just one person speaking and it's diff it's easy to distract for one person to be distracted now that's why if you're a participant of course um, it's better to contribute if you're an organizer it's better to set up this um uh breakout rooms opportunities for people to chat in smaller group for example four or five people where every single person um has to speak basically and and share something so um this is uh my little bits on this topic. We have just a few minutes left. Um, again, feel free to write something in the chat, just impression, comment, feedback, what was the most helpful. Um, and uh, if you have anything more to ask Hashem about working on team, so any, or any maybe other question that is on your mind, Maybe you have a project and you're thinking how to start working on it using different tools 
and how to utilize this best. So feel free to ask in the chat or unmute yourself. So if we won't have any questions, um, I guess I'll take advantage of this opportunity to share more um, about Global Shapers. So this is the website that actually Hashem worked on. So thank you, Global Shapers Dubai. I'm just sending it in a group. Um, so Global Shapers community, again, is, is a network, amazing network um of uh young people around the world and whatever you are lebanon or egypt or um saudi or around like um in most countries there's a presence of the hub so i'm sending you two websites if there's something interested in if you're passionate about connecting with other people and doing projects um with um on community development and uh, meeting like-minded young individuals feel free to go on the website uh, to become part of the hub um, and even to reach out and to engage with the global shapers hub where you based um, sarah is saying we had multiple workshops in the university in collaboration with the global shapers that's amazing that's great that you're already familiar with the network Ola says thank you for the fruitful session thank you Hashem. Um, Great. So um, I'm going to um, do a screenshot. <laughs> so this is this will be equivalent of a selfie that we would take if we all were in the same room. So now we're all are on the same screen. So if you can turn up your camera, feel free to do so. Um, and oh, great, Mohammed is here <laughs> and uh, if you can't that's okay uh also we have more people <laughs> we want to see you and um again this will be shared uh with the representative of al Huray foundation um great sarah <laughs> and uh with also with our members because we really want also to brag about you all <laughs> that what you're what you're doing around the world and your projects so okay great i think people who want to turn up the camera did um you have five last seconds before i do screenshot and you can I don't know, you can do a face or like something, whatever, or you can show something, whatever you have. Okay, one, two, three, smile. Yay, love it. Awesome, and then we have thumbs up from voila. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Well, um, at this point, yeah? I wanna say thank you for such an amazing um, workshop. Oh yeah, I just want to stick it out there. It was very beneficial. Thank you. Thank you for any time. Great. If anyone wants to say anything, feel free to do so. Cool. Well, uh, it also was uh, our pleasure and thank you, Hashem, for, for your time, for putting together um, the the information if you have any more questions feel free to share with your operator contact we can get in touch with us um, about anything and hope to see you in our next webinar next week um, that i'm going to present about building your brand so and um and good luck have a good evening and good luck in your studies and have an amazing summer bye mm -hmm.